Yes, we're back for another week from Chicago. Radio like you've never heard it before. With all the ahs and you knows spliced out. No time, no weather. It's the Steve Dahl Supper Club. Yes, it's on tape. Featuring. I forgot to tell you, Gary. Gary Meyer. Wait, Gary, you're not supposed to do that voice anymore. Go ahead and finish. Just do it in your regular voice. Hello. My regular voice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And now, the star of the show, Steve Dahl. Thank you. Just because the band stops doesn't mean you have to. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're not supposed to do that voice anymore. I've only done it for one show. <laughs> I know. They came down hard on us last <laughs> week. Well. In New York. That's now this it. this show, as of this taping, this show hasn't even been on the air. And it's already been roundly criticized <laughs> by hundreds of ABC Radio Network executives and execu-tets. Watch it. And uh, one of the things they didn't like was that voice. They didn't know why, but they didn't <laughs> like it. Does it intimidate them? <laughs> Hi to all the don't ABC executives. Don't do it, executive. I swear, man, they're going to cancel us. Please don't. I've got a wife and kid. He's only nine months old. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Oh, and the other thing was, I wasn't on mic enough. So remind me when I wander away like this. Yeah, okay. Even though you can still hear it. They want it. Get right on it. They want it like this. Yeah, that's what Hi. FM. Hi, I'm the Stever. Yeah. Good evening. It's FM. Yeah, it's in stereo. It's two speakers. See, what else didn't they like? We did some handicapped jokes yeah. that I think will be taken out by the time the first show makes it on the air. Uh-huh. Uh, hostages? Well, I think that I argued that in. They said, you know, it's not good to make fun of the hostages. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? They came back alive. It's not like they died or anything. I mean, well, you know, people like the hostages. <laughs> it's not good to have opinions contrary to the, uh, uh, to the mainstream. I said, well, what do you think this show is? <laughs> yeah. Well. It's as far on shore as you can get. You know, we're so far away from the mainstream. Where, where are we? <laughs> on shore, away from the mainstream. Oh, I see. see? Yeah. It's so far away from the mainstream. I got it. Okay. I got it. Okay, so anyway, um, so we have to be cool about the handicapped stuff. All right. Unless we have some handicapped people. Uh, as a matter of fact, we do, Steve. We do got we? a whole section. Okay, because I wandered out into the audience during the first show and said, Sir, stand up, and then they'll probably take this out again, but who cares? Huh? <laughs> I said, Sir, stand up, and I said, Oh, my God, he is standing. He has no legs. <laughs> and I said, Actually, I use the term for no legs. I think no legs will go. <laughs> but you can't say the term, which is right. that freaks people out. Yeah. Uh, that's like a disease or something. Uh, it's not actually a disease. It is a problem, but it's not a disease. No, don't go any further, because already <laughs> they've got their so razor anyway, blades. I told the censors, I said, no, but he really was a <laughs> But they didn't buy it. No. But I said, how do you know? It's radio. How do you know? <laughs> Prove that he's not. Can you hear his legs? I mean, how do you know? So uh, that show mm, last week might have been a little uh, jumpy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you have to understand that this is like the wildest thing that's ever been on the ABC radio network. I mean, like they, they took the show, and we're, you know, we're used to working every day on the air in Chicago. And as you know, uh, those of you here that live in Chicago, we get pretty out there. And uh, we have a pretty big following here, so they allow us to get out there because they make money off us, right? So they're not going to say anything. And uh, they brought the tape to New York. I'm getting off mic again. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll just stay right on the microphone like this. They brought the tape to New York and played it for like these, you know, 45-year-old uh, <laughs> network censors, you know, like middle-class women, you know, that uh, make extra money being censors for the radio network. And, uh, well, they're both still in the hospital. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But I think they'll get used to us, don't you? No, not at all. I'm counting on this show to make us big stars, so <laughs> let's hope so. Thanks for coming. we got to take care of some business. Roll that theme music. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Thanks for listening out there, too. We appreciate it.
back to Steve Dow Supper Club. I'm Gary Meyer, and here's Steve. Okay. Also, I forgot to mention uh, before the commercials that the uh, censors uh, were upset at the uh, amount of uh, mm, sexual innuendos <laughs> with double meanings. But see, they can't touch those, because you can always say, hey, excuse me, but I'm offended. I didn't think that. Okay? Uh -huh. You yeah. take your mind out of the gutter, right. lady. Exactly. Because that's not where mine is. Yeah. Now, uh... I know I'm off mic, but I'm moving it, so I'll be... Okay, now I'm back on mic, just like they wanted. Out of sight. I'd like to... This is not necessarily for the benefit of the audience. This is uh, actually more for the benefit of Stephen Gary. I'd like to now call my wife, who will put my nine-month-old son on the phone, and you can hear him... Okay. It's a ever, so it's a crowd pleaser. Have you ever heard drool over the phone? It's beautiful. <laughs> You're gonna love it. So this has this is sort of a double-edged sword. Then <laughs> it's a crowd pleaser, and maybe it'll make the censors feel sorry for us, and they'll leave the show intact this week. <laughs> so people will like us, and it won't be the same old pablum that you always hear on the radio. The same old crap. The same old watered-down crap, and we can um, we'll become successful and and. I can put my son through school. Hmm. All through one phone call. <laughs> wow. <laughs> through this show, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I can't hear it, so I don't know. Do I have to... Who's that? <laughs> Guy from the phone company. <laughs> he follows us around. <laughs> hang Deposit up. Deposit 25 cents. Did you hear that out there? In my headphones, I heard, hang up and get a dial tone. <laughs> okay, whoever it was was right. And then what do I do? It stopped. 6-1, says the voice in my headphones that you can't hear. I don't hear a dial tone anymore. Hang up again. Okay. Six. Are you going to uh, dial that right in front of these Yeah, people? you got to turn it down because they'll see my... Yeah, and I have to turn the phone away because you'll see my home number. <laughs> these guys got their pen ready. Okay. We'll call his son later, too, and put somebody through school. That's what he said. You call through his son. Put somebody through changes. Through changes, yeah. <laughs> We have to change them enough as it is, so please. Hello? Hi, Jonna. Hi. It's me, Steve. Hi. How are you? Is your husband home? <laughs> oh, he's down here. What if a guy answered? <laughs> Yo, hello. <laughs> Yo, I'll get her for you. <laughs> yeah, Hold she on, just got out of the shower. <laughs> yeah. I'll get her. She's getting dressed. <laughs> Honey, you decent? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Uh, we're kind of on the air now, although we're really on tape. But uh, I just wanted uh, to call and uh, have you put Patrick on so okay. that the censors could hear him and um, believe. I tried to tell them today when I talked to them that I am, in fact, a human. They, <laughs> what planet are you from? You're disgusting. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm a human being. I have a son, a lovely wife, uh, right now studying for her bar exam. She wants to be a bartender. <laughs> All right, but seriously. With, with a show like ours, too, it should cut down on legal uh, expenses. We get sued every other day, so this is going to come in handy having an in-house lawyer. <laughs> I hope you pass. Is Patrick up? Yeah, he's right here, but the thing is, he's eating. Wait a sec, I'll see if I can wrestle <laughs> He's too busy, Steve. Yeah. Call back. <laughs> Big bucket of chicken. <laughs> My family really respects me. Call back later, you pig. <laughs> no, but really, this is important to me. Patrick. Hi, Patrick. What are you having? Medium rare? <laughs> well, you should see the stuff he eats. Looks Why? the same coming out as it does going in. And smells the same, too. Honey. Patrick. He, he seems more interested in his bottle. I'm going to... Okay, well, fine, okay? <laughs> then the censors are going to cut this show to hell, okay. and we're never going to make it, and he's not going to go to college, and he's going to end up being a heroin addict. Fine. Thank you very... Nice family. We'll be back after a couple of records here with more of the Steve Dahl Supper Club. That's all right, don't worry, I'll call her back and apologize. It was just for comedy.
You're listening to the Steve Dahl Supper Club. From Chicago, Illinois, United States of America. Yeah, here's Steve. What'd you just throw up or something? Yeah, what's that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you like that? You like that, huh? I'm gonna call my wife back. Well, 6 1, right? Marcus, come cover the phone so they can't see. They're creeping up now. Well, it's like the... having Eric Estrada's home number or something. I know the first two numbers are 6-1. Oh, take the beeps down, too, because people can tell, see? One time, I did that on the air, and some guy was so sick, he had a tape going, which is sick, because why would you want to hear our show again? Um, he had a tape going, and then he played it back, and he just kept doing it until I got the number right by listening to the tones. It took me about three weeks, <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> I don't like Gary to have my home number. He always bugs me. He always wants to get paid and stuff. <laughs> okay, let me try it again here. Do I have a dial tone? I can't. Yeah, let me hear it. Okay. Okay, turn it down now. All the way down. I don't want anybody calling me at home after this show airs. Is your n a number a familiar song or anything? It's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, <laughs> I think. Over seventeen million dollars in the cash call jackpot. Hello? Hi. Hi. I just hung up on you for comedic effect. I know. Sir. Oh, okay. Talk to you later. Oh, okay. <laughs> Unless you have anything else to say. No. What's for dinner? What's for dinner? Which Stouffer is frozen entree are we having tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Ever since she's been in law school, I should have bought stock in Stouffer's. I swear to God. Okay, I gotta go. Okay, bye. Bye. We're going to take care of some business back in a couple of minutes with more of the Steve Dahl Supper Club. The Steve Dahl Supper Club from Chicago. I'm Gary Meyer. We got the blues. Yeah, right, too. Yeah, that's right, Gary. We're going to have the blues coming up here in just a minute. Yeah, it's a tribute to uh, Lightning Hopkins, is it? Is it a tribute? Huh? Is it a tribute to Lightning Hopkins or what? He just died. That'll happen. I saw in the paper, Lightning Hopkins <laughs> dead at 69. I don't think it's any of our business how he died. <laughs> okay, I think that's very embarrassing. Oh. Can I play? <laughs> no. I'm in Chicago, the home of the blues. I can play. I gotta play, see? Every show I gotta play, because then I get my scale, double scale, because I'm the band leader from the Musicians <laughs> Union. <laughs> so even though I don't play that well, I, I just made like 400 bucks <laughs> for doing that. <laughs> Can I play? <laughs> no, but I can show make some money. That's for sure. We're going to play a record first, then come back and do some blues news. Mm -hmm. Just like the one wing girl sing a song <laughs> to sing. So familiar. Lord have mercy. Just like the one wing girl. One wing girl. It's a song I wrote. Hope you enjoy it. One wing girl sing a song. Butterfly dance now, okay? My favorite. Well, that's super. I have big puffy sleeves. I'm a butterfly. I'm a medieval witch. <laughs> it's the Steve Dow Supper Club, yeah. Yeah. I'm Gary Meyer, and I think we're going to do some. Recorded live in Chicago. Blues news, right? Yeah. Tell yeah, it. We're going to tell it. Tell it. We're going to tell it. Let me get my guitar on now, just in case I didn't play enough to get scale. All right, we're going to tell it now. I lost my pick. I lost my teeth, too. 
All right, we ready. This is something we call the Blue Noob. Yeah, yeah, tell it. Oh, Lord have yeah. mercy. Yeah, that be bad. Yeah, but when I say bad, I mean good, you know. Well, tell it. Yeah, I might have to play just a little bit now. Play it. Oh, yeah, that sounded very good now. That was yeah, that, that's mellow. No, I didn't play it yet. Ouch. Oh, yeah, well, I, you know, I got the blue. Tell it. You got it bad. Yeah, well, if you seen these new stories I saw, you had the blue too. Lord have mercy. You know, you pretty bluesy for a Caucasian. Thank you. Tell it. Make it talk. Make it I, I shut can... up now. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Hey, man, you know, look out now. I, I don't want to have to cut you. You know, I come down upside your head. I cut you bad. And that's good, right? I no, it ain't good. Oh. That bad ain't oh, good. I see. I'm learning. That sir. bad's bad. That's bad. Yeah, some bad is bad, some bad is good. It all depends. Oh. Usually anything followed by the word, uh, preceded rather by the word cut. That's bad. That's real bad. Or followed by it, for that matter. Okay. Anything around the word cut is usually bad. All right. Like bad, bad, not good, bad. Okay. Yeah. Tell it now. Yeah. I just want the audience to attest to the fact that there was no stunt guitar player in here. I actually played all those licks myself. Yeah? Yeah, thank you. All right. All right. Now, Marcus, if you could come on over here for a minute. Brother. Mr. Marcus Palmer. Is he really your brother? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, not exactly. Oh. But uh, he my friend. Oh. Ain't that right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> we introduced Marcus uh, to you all last week. He's about maybe mm, 80 million pounds. <laughs> and he's real big and black and beautiful. Mm -hmm. Ain't that right, Marcus? That's right. And he holds up the applause sign. Just in case people don't feel like applauding, you know, he scare them a little bit, so they will. <laughs> it all makes sense. All right, now, let me, you got to hold it, because I might want to play this a little bit if I get real sad. You know, you got to hold the story up for me now. Tell oh, yes. Yeah. Tell it. I'm sad already. Tell us so we can be sad. <laughs> yeah, maybe you better take my guitar away from me. <laughs> I'm going for quadruple scale now. <laughs> no, put it back now. Put it back. I'm ready. A trail of blood in Tell the it. snow. Tell it. Yeah. It led police two day to wit to. Oh, that's. Hey, take bad. my guitar away from me. Yeah. It distracted me now. See if you can get about a hundred bucks for it. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give me a break, <laughs> sucker? <laughs> can you say that? <laughs> we'll find out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> when we hear the show back, if it got a beep there, then we know you can't say that no more. <laughs> A trail of blood in the snow led police Tuesday to witnesses of a murder in a south side shack. Tell it. Yeah. <laughs> That's sad. It's very sad. It's so sad. I tell you, the trail began in an abandoned garage at 26 East 120th Street, where just after midnight, police discovered the body of a south side man wrapped in an orange blanket, shot once through the head. Lord have mercy. Oh, yeah. That's so Yes. Did he get it upside the hade? <laughs> Lester Lee Todd, 21 at 27 East 120 20th Street, was dead on arrival at Roseland Community Hospital. Did he have to pay for the ride then? <laughs> he was dead before he got... I mean, how does that work? <laughs> Never mind. Tell it. <laughs> Area 2, that's a here. Chicago violent crime detective follow, detectives followed the bloody trail to a cottage at 11947 South State. Tell it. State Street, that Gray Street. And continued in the house. Oh, Lord have yeah, they mercy. Did. Police said the residents initially pleaded ignorance about Todd's death. <laughs> I mean, not that he couldn't hear or nothing. The red stuff, they said, they insisted the red stuff was spaghetti juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they said. It's right here in the paper. Oh, this piece of white. Oh, oh that's, yeah. That's a nice story. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's pretty sad. How do you? But there's more. Oh, I was there's gonna, more. I was gonna ask you, how do you plead ignorance? You go, I'm really stupid. <laughs> I am so dumb. Please believe me. I'm so stupid. I swear, I thought it was spaghetti juice. <laughs> that, that's pleaded ignorance, all right. Well, I tell you something else. Later, after persistent questioning with witnesses, uh. Tell it, if you can. <laughs> when you talk like this, you reads like this. <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah. But I'm working on it. Working. I'm working on it. Later, after persistent questioning, the witnesses explained that Todd had argued with another man earlier in the evening. Todd cursed the other man and called him a sissy. Lord. Yeah, Lord. you don't call nobody no sissy. No. Unless you want to end up like spaghetti juice. <laughs> Yeah, spaghetti and meatballs. I mean, that piece should work, oh, brother. Lord have Play mercy. Play it on your guitar now, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh. That's so sad. And it looked like spaghetti sauce. Yeah, it was all ragu-y. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess you could say that guy is in the pasta tents. Yeah, I think you could. Oh, that's so sad. I got another one here. Tell it. I got another one. And this one is very sad. Oh, tell it. This is very sad. And it's along the same lines as the sissy thing. Oh, yeah? I think you're going to like it. All right, now. Listen to this. Tell it. This happened in San Francisco. <laughs> that city by the bay. Oh. Well, lots of peoples happen to be gay. <laughs> All right, we get down now. Lord have mercy. A man wearing a black evening gown. <laughs> oh, tell it. A blonde wig and leotard. <laughs> and cradling a Bible nimbly scaled the 746, no 746 no foot north tower of the Golden Gate tell Bridge. It. I'm trying, brother. Please. <laughs> He climbed the, he scaled the 746 top north. That's a tall one, isn't it? <laughs> the lights in here is bad or something. I just can't seem to get it together. I, maybe I've been drinking too much wine. You know, I get yes, too depressed. Maybe. I'm going to try that again here. Uh, Cradle in the Bible nimbly scaled the 746 foot north tower of the Golden Gate Bridge and then sat for two hours telling officers that he wanted to be alone. Oh, oh yeah. Lord have mercy. Oh, yeah. I'm telling it now. Richard Enger, 34, who identified himself as Rachel. Rachel? <laughs> you can call me Rachel. <laughs> was persuaded by authority to climb down and was later taken to Mar Marin, <laughs> Marin General Hospital for psychiatric observation. Why? The California Highway Patrol reported. Tell it. I wonder if Eric Estrada took him down. <laughs> <laughs> Enger. An employee of a San Rafael tree service <laughs> was called the best tree climber in Marin County by the <laughs> operator of, of the tree surgery for him, <laughs> who eventually helped talk his employee out of jumping. The chip said anger changed from high heels into tennis shoes <laughs> Tell it. early Sunday. And that's but he wore his high heels to the brim. Yeah. To the you know very smart. <laughs> yeah. Very smart looking, yeah. All right, then I'll change when I get there. No more casual footwear for climbing. <laughs> so anyway, um, he cha uh, changed from high heels into tennis shoes early Sunday and then scrambled up a bridge cable with ease <laughs> to get to the top of the 746-foot tower in 10 minutes. Woo! Yeah, that would be record mercy. time. Once at the top, he put his heels back. <laughs> he put his heel back, his heels back on. Tell it. Yeah. And his hair was blowing in the wind. <laughs> uh, that'll how happen much, in San how much Francisco, hair, you know. How much <laughs> hairspray should a man put on before he climbs up the bridge? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. <laughs> so is his mind. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, his hair was blowing in the wind, and it was beautiful. <laughs> According to Bridge Sergeant Lou Ladini, <laughs> who took the elevator trip uh, <laughs> up to talk to Enger, uh, and uh, he uh, helped talk him into coming down too. Oh, Lord have mercy. I wonder if people tried to look up his draft when he was coming I'll down. I bet they did. Oh, that be the worst man. Oh. Yeah, that's the blues news, people. That's it. Things, they be bad all over. That makes me sad. Yeah, we're going we gonna to do some commotion now. And we're going to be back in a couple of minutes with more of that Steve Dahl Shepherd Club. Don't you go away now.
anybody should ask. You're listening Tell them it's to none the of their business. Steve Dahl Supper Club from Chicago. Yeah, what is this, Russia? I'm Gary Meyer, and here's my comrade, Steve Dahl. Okay. A couple of tunes and then stump the band. And I mean that literally. Supper Club continues you guys from know that Chicago. One? I'm you guys Gary know that Meyer, one? and here's Steve. You know it? You know the Bob Seger song? What? Steve, you're talking to people in soundproof <laughs> booths. Didn't you ever watch? I wondered why I couldn't hear him. Any game what, shows? What, Greg? Our drummer, Mr. Greg Potter. Itty bitty Greg Potter. What? <laughs> He said he wants his mommy. What? Greg's about, what, three feet tall? Yeah. yeah. He looks like Sean Cassidy, and he's about three feet tall. Sean Cassidy with dark hair and a, uh, and a shark's tooth earring. Now, what did you say? Come back. I couldn't hear you. I just wanted to know if you know the song. Oh, yeah. Oh, you do? Well, let's pretend you guys didn't. This is how we're going to play Stump the Band. Mmm. <laughs> Donnie, Mr. Donnie Meltdown on keyboards. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Right-handed? Okay, Marcus, the axe, please. Okay, when you ask us a question, if the band doesn't know the song, then we cut off one of the arms of one of the members until there aren't any arms left. Okay? Donnie? Put your, arm, put your arm up on the piano. <laughs> it truly is Stump the Band. How does that sound with one hand? Go ahead and try and play. Anything. Don't make me cut off the other one so soon. <laughs> he's, he's in pain, but he's reaching for his, his keyboards. Okay, so let me uh, go out into the audience here. Except I can't because my microphone <laughs> is taped to the stand. <laughs> hmm. Well, easy for you to say, but it's thick tape. There. <laughs> Just lift it out of its stand. <laughs> How'd you do that? Steve. It came off. We'll give you 30 seconds to plead it's ignorance. Still tape. It was, it's on some sort of nipple or something. Yep, they lift right off in case they start on fire. <laughs> you can take it and throw it in so a bucket. It's, it's taped to like the holder, but then the holder goes on to this. Yeah. Onto this nipple. Mm -hmm. I like it when it goes on a nipple. <laughs> I like to say that because I, I can get away with it because it's really a nipple. <laughs> get out into the audience. Yes, I will. I will. And speaking of nipples, is it still cold in here? <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is go to the frozen food section of my uh, <laughs> local store and just stand around. I don't have enough cord to get out in the, into the audience. Good planning. <laughs> so the microphone came off the stand, but it doesn't reach out into the crowd. So I'll tell you what, I'll get a longer cord. My wife's been wanting me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take care of some commercial business. We'll come back and play Stump the Band. Don't bleed to death, Donnie. Back in just a couple of minutes. It's the Steve Dahl Supper Club. I'm Gary Meyer. Steve is going to continue. Stump 
helping that band. Can you tell that Donnie's only playing with one hand? Where should we pile the arms up? Any special corner? or? Mm. We'll clear, I don't know. We'll clear out a space. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. We could sell them out front. <laughs> Souvenirs. Okay, who has a song for Stump the Band? You do? Step, step right this way. <laughs> <laughs> See, now this is, last week, this is where I did the... Yeah, be careful. ...joke about the guy with no be legs. Be careful. But this guy has no legs, and he really can't step, and that's why the audience is laughing, just to let you in on the joke. <laughs> What's your name? Stand up. Please. Bill O'Neill. Bill, where'd your hair go? <laughs> <laughs> I lost it. Yeah. He, Bill was here last week, I think, and he had hair. <laughs> so, um, where did it go this week? Uh, I know you worried so much about the censors taking stuff out of the show that you heard last week. You worried for me. You pulled out all your hair. That's beautiful. Thank you. Where are you from, Bill? Chicago. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> South side of Chicago. South side? Right by Midway Airport. Okay, right by the spaghetti juice, as a matter of fact. And what song uh, would you like to hear the band play? Scotch and Soda. Mm, Greg? Greg seems to know that one. Greg the drummer? Go ahead. Scotch and Soda? <laughs> I got a Scotch and Soda. You're so loda, dead. And then you want to date Yoda <laughs> and do funny things to him. Did you say Yoda or yoga? Yoda. Yoda. Oh, I, it makes me want to take yoga. I mean, Yoda. <laughs> now you got me confused. You know, Yoda, the little green guy with the right. funny ears. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. That's it? <laughs> you're a humanitarian, but you're a liar. Sit down. Stop. Somebody loses an arm. Hmm. Yeah, Mr. Johnny Skender, bass guitar. What are you? Let me. I'm. I'm gonna do your. Uh, I'm gonna do your fingering arm, okay? So you can still play just notes, but they won't be the right notes. Ready? Take it like a man, Johnny. Come on, Johnny. Don't look away. A real man watches his hand and arm get cut off. <laughs> Whack! Ah! Oh my! Ah! Oh! Yeah! Yeah! Stump the band. Let me hear you play a little. He's in pain. Listen to that. Come on, play something. Come on, come on. Anything. Hurts. <laughs> Grow up, man. It's only an arm. Okay, sounds good. Okay, who's next, please? Come on up. Can you come up? I'm afraid to go back there because I, I think I, I don't know. I smell a handgun somewhere in the crowd, <laughs> and <laughs> I'd like to stay up near the light. Marcus, could you frisk him? Oh, you're just glad to see me? <laughs> I appreciate that. What's your name? Uh, Rick Rotrammel from Ridgeway, Illinois, popcorn capital of the world. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Is it really? Yes, it is. Salted, buttered, what? No, Pop's Right Popcorn, Blevins Popcorn Company. All right. Hey, hey, say it. Uh, <laughs> fascinating. Really? I'm not going to say it. <laughs> and what's the song you'd like to hear the band do? Mary Sue Barnes. Mm, I think they know her. They've done her before. <laughs> Mary Sue Barnes. Greg thinks he knows this one again. Go ahead. Johnny, you're not playing the right notes, babe. Mary Sue Barnes. <laughs> That's not it, is it, sir? That's so close that you wouldn't... Uh, close doesn't count. Uh -uh. Stop, stop. Uh-uh. Stop. How does it go? Mary Sue Barnes is queen of all the acrobats. She can do the tricks that... You I don't think we can do this on the air. <laughs> Remember that nine-month-old child I want to put through school? Okay. Marcus isn't in the band. <laughs> <laughs> he wants me to do a, uh, a Roots thing on you. <laughs> well, that was a guy's foot, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Marcus. Just for fun, let me cut off your foot. Oh. Just like on Roots. Let me do it just like Roots. I like Roots. <laughs> I finally perfect my Paul Lind, and he's dead. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go... Mm, Bert. Lead guitar player. Bert, your fingering arm. 
Put it out like a man. Ready? Yeah. Whack! <laughs> oh. Ooh, I got that one. That's a clean, that's a, that was a nice clean cut too, right at the elbow. Oh, look at that blood spurt. My God, isn't that beautiful? That's almost like one of those lighted fountains you see in the summer or something. Ooh. Okay. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate the opportunity to do something sick and disgusting to another fellow human being. I love it. I love yeah, it. okay, who else? How about a, any women? You? Do you have one? Come on up here. You have two, actually. I, I see them both. What's your name? Jill Stanley. Hi, Jill. How are you? <laughs> Good to see you, Beth. Okay, where are you from? Orland Township. Yeah, it's a beautiful <laughs> town. I love it there. Okay, what song would you like to hear the band do? Nothing. <laughs> like nothing in the way she moves. That one? <laughs> no, no, no. You guys know nothing? It's yeah. a real song, right? Really? Okay, uh, Greg? Oh, Greg says he knows this one. Okay, go ahead, Greg. <laughs> no, no, stop. I know hey. nothing. No, they're going to be down to nothing soon, but how does it go? Monday, nothing. Tuesday, nothing. I think this is another one of those songs we can't sing on the air. I think my wife wrote this song. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Greg, I think we're going to go for one of your... Uh, come on out here. I, I don't want to I don't have to crawl into the soundproof booth. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, which... Uh, what, did I cut off your, your fingering arm? Okay, good. Okay. He was trying to play chords with his other one <laughs> in a desperate attempt, but no, no. If I cut off your fingering arm, then you just play the notes with no chords. Don't cheat. He is such a musician mm -hmm. to the very end. Yeah. Okay, he cut off my fingering arm, but if I take my picking arm and I just and I press it against the neck, maybe I can make the notes. No. Okay, what are you what handed are you? Besides under. <laughs> what? What is that? They can't. Right. Okay. Put it out. Ready? Whack! Ah! 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 Ooh! Ooh! Boy, he, his yeah. bones are brittle. Yeah. You need more calcium. Okay, well, get back in there. We've completely stumped the band. Well, not quite. Who's left? They still all have one left. They can still play. <laughs> They're getting brutal. big money for this. You're brutal. Okay, who's next? Who's next? I got one for you. The uh, it's an Hawaiian. What's your name, sir? My name is Terry Burhans. This is a Hawaiian theme. Local weatherman, <laughs> trying to get, trying to get some national exposure. <laughs> yes, sir. This is called Kialakaku, Hawaii. Ooh. Greg knows this one. He knows it. I'm sure he does. Okay, <laughs> let's hear it, Greg. I can still play that cowbell. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, doesn't sound Hawaiian to me. <laughs> All right, that's enough. How does it go? I want to go back to my little grass shack in Kealakaku, Hawaii, where the winny witty wacky wacky all go swimming by. And ideal drugs. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go with Mr. Johnny Skinder, bass player, other arm. Whack! Ah, ah. <laughs> okay, who's next? You, sir. What's your name? Frank. Frank. Where are you from, Frank? Uh, Prospect Heights. Took him a second. Uh, hold on, man. Uh, it's coming to me. And what's the song? Uh, Last Night. Last Night? You know that one? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Last Night. I don't think that's it. He's shaking his head. No, you can't play with your stump, John. That's not fair. Okay, is that right? Close, but no. no. How does it go? Last night, Steve stayed up late. And I don't think we want to hear that one on the radio either. I think I saw him in the bar I was in last night. Okay. Uh, Donnie Meltdown, keyboard player. Let's get rid of you. Whack! <laughs> now that's oh, entertainment, huh? Gruesome. Who's next, please? Okay, just yell it out. Thank you, sir. What's your name? <laughs> Said I look pretty. I Couple appreciate that. A couple sailors in the audience. <laughs> what, what's your name? Dino. Dino. Gino. Gino. What's the difference? Elmwood Park. Elmwood Park. What's the song? 
Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> you look so pretty. Greg knows it, huh? Okay, Greg, go ahead. <laughs> if I were you guys in the band, I'd be pretty mad at Greg. He doesn't know any, <laughs> any songs. You can't play with your nose, Don. Stop it. Okay, stop. Greg, get out of here, quick. Other arm. <laughs> Anybody else? Any, that wasn't the oh, right no. song. Get out of here. Maybe if we get him to a hospital. Okay, I got one. Mm. Mm. Let It Be by the Beatles. <laughs> now, what's still going in the drum booth? Oh, his foot. Get out of here. I'm going to do a roots thing on you. I'm afraid to ask what he hit the cowbell with. We got to take care of some more business. We'll be back with more of the Steve Dahl. What is this? <laughs> That's gruesome. Steve Dahl. Supper Club. Massacre. <laughs> in just a couple of minutes. The band, with their limbs reattached, we're back on the Steve Dahl Supper Club from Chicago. I'm Gary Meyer. This show is like a. Okay. This show is like a cartoon. You know, you come back and then all the arms and legs are back. <laughs> the next frame. Yeah. So that's why the band is playing again. We're going to do a couple of songs and be back with more of the Steve Dahl Supper Club. <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> Supper Club continue from Chicago. I'm Gary Meyer. And hey, Lynette Squeaky Brom is in the audience. Hi, Lynette. And what? I was going to say, you make interesting You just sound. had your ears pierced. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't me. Perhaps one of the band members had chili for dinner. <laughs> and is still very nervous. That would make for the high-pitched uh, yeah. sound. Okay, we've got to do some more commercials. We are very expensive to pay for. And we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with more of the Steve Dahl Supper Club. on the Steve Dow Supper Club. He's a bad but Shut your mouth. I'm Gary Meyer. Now here's Steve. What did you just say? I didn't have my headphones. It was a very beautiful introduction to your nice show. It sounded like show. poetry. It was. Okay. All right. We're back. We're back. And we're proud. Yes. Time now for a word few words from, well, I ran away from home when I was 15. Oh. Yeah. My parents were both alpha, uh, <laughs> athletic? Yeah, athletic. Well, they taught you how to run away. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they both had athlete's feet. Uh, they were both alcoholics and they beat me as a child. They beat you in running away? <laughs> they got there first? They beat Why? me in all sports, Gary, and that used to embarrass me. And one night I woke up and I was lying in bed and I found my dad putting jock itch in my underwear. He had a, a little Petri dish <laughs> and it had jock itch in it and he, I saw him putting it in my underwear and I ran away. Scratching all the way. No, I didn't put on the underwear. They were very athletic, though. Oh. And uh, they wanted me to experience jock itch <laughs> as part of the athletic thing. So anyway, Gary, I guess I've been on the road for... Mm, how old am I? 27. What, that's about 20 years? 15 to 27, that's about 20 years, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, carry the one, okay. Yeah. And this lady has been an inspiration to me. There, there have been times when I was so lonely, I wished I had that jock itch <laughs> just for somebody to talk to. Hmm? You know, to go into a, a pharmacy and say, hey, how about some Cruex? <laughs> sure, son. Where does it itch? <laughs> oh, right here. <laughs> you know what my favorite TV commercial is? The Preparation H1 where the big burly truck driver with the turtleneck sweater and the lumberjack shirt comes in and asks the kindly old bald man 
if he can help him? <laughs> yeah. I've got, you know. I certainly do, and <laughs> I've got something for you right behind the counter here. I've got bad breath. What are you going to do? So anyway, uh, this lady has been a constant inspiration, and we like to include her in every show. Dear Abby, is it this bottom one here? Yeah, the bottom one. I'm 39, divorced, have four kids, am on welfare, and I think I'm pregnant. <laughs> Dear Abby, I'm 39. <laughs> I'm starting to work on this said welfare funny, okay? Well, whale there. It's not funny. <laughs> Very I said scary. it funny, though. But though I forgot we're trying to appeal to all different areas of the country with different dialects. Whale fair. There. there. High to the south. Okay. Dear Abby, I'm divorced. 39 divorced, have four kids, am on welfare, and I think I'm pregnant again. That's bad enough, but what's really bothering me is my hair won't, <laughs> won't hold a perm. Oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe if you'd try holding a job for a while. A couple of songs and back with more. Steve Dahl Supper Club. Don't go away. Supper Club. We're talking Steve Dow Supper Club. But we're talking from Chicago. We're talking I'm Gary Meyer. We're talking he's Steve Dow. What more do you want to know? We're talking back in a couple of minutes after commercials. I love it when we make them applaud for the commercials. <laughs> United States of America. I'm Gary Meyer, and here's Steve Dow, of course. Thank you, Gary. Hey, Steve. Yes, Gary. Can I start this segment off with uh, a quote from my favorite gal, <laughs> Patricia Hurst? You mind? <laughs> we feel that she's the Jean Paul Sartre of the 80s. Let me just quote Patricia Hurst. <laughs> this is from, from Playboy, right? Yeah, the interview they did with her. Mm -hmm. Quote from Patricia Hearst. Who was recently on the cover of uh, People. With her baby. When did they start putting bank <laughs> robbers on the cover of People? <laughs> Charles Manson, next week on the cover of People. <laughs> Quote, we all shared a communal toothbrush. Isn't that disgusting? <laughs> Ew, creepy. All those horrible people and all those cooties. <laughs> <laughs> but it was supposed to be bourgeois to think you needed your own toothbrush, end quote. That Sin Q thought of everything. I'll tell you something else, too. We all going to use the same toothbrush. <laughs> Oh, cooties, Sing Q. Use it, Tanya. Use a toothbrush. <laughs> you stepped on my joke, babe. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, cooties, Sing Q. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for ruining the timing. Oh, you don't believe me? Well, if I had a time and space machine and I took us back and the timing was perfect, you people would be doubled over with laughter. Uh-huh. I'm a professional, I know. Gary, semi-professional <laughs> after that. No, just kidding. No, I'm not. You don't get paid tonight, man. You ruined it. <laughs> Damn. All right. I'll never forget that shootout. Yeah. That was something, wasn't it? Remember that? When all the ammunition they had in the basement started going <laughs> off? <laughs> get a little hot in there, Sin Q? <laughs> yeah, but it's cool. <laughs> we'll be cool. Uh. I wonder if... Uh, uh, I guess, that, didn't they identify them by dental charts? Yeah. Wonder if he had cooties on his <laughs> dental charts. Yeah, that's okay. in cue over there. I know timing. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> and now, okay, see? Okay. You know, and you doubt me, and that hurts so much. And now, a song uh, about a guy that we love to make fun of. Uh, I'm sure you've seen him in, in your city. He's on all over America. Super guy. No, not Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Although we do like to make fun of him, too. Oh, look, it's Chef Brackett. Hi, Mr. Rogers. Today I'm going to make an asparagus souffle, and it's going to make your urine smell funny. <laughs> I like it when you make that souffle, Chef. A couple of songs are back with more. Steve Dahl Supper Club, don't go away. It's Steve Dahl Supper Club. 
Listen, we appreciate you uh, listening tonight. Thanks for being here in the uh, studio audience. We'll talk to you again next Sunday night.